Hey what's up YouTube I'm gonna be doing a upper and lower ball joint on a 40 corner line uh, before I get started just want to say thanks to all my subscribers if you haven't already yet subscribed please go ahead and do so I'll greatly appreciate it so as you can see safety first as usual car is on jack stand have my jack as a backup and I got to remove the brake uh, caliper. Just going to remove the entire caliper bracket. Then I got to remove this cap for the bearing. And the outer tie rod. So to make it a lot easier to get access to the bolts for the caliper bracket upper and lower i went ahead and turned the steering wheel so the bolts are more exposed and then i got me a 21 millimeter on a breaker bar i'm just going to go ahead and crack that loose upper get on the lower one <laughs> crack that one loose one's loose, that's out. Got the lower one out. Now I just gotta get a wire hanger or bungee cord so I could, once I take the caliper off, I could hook it on the spring or just hook it so the line doesn't get snagged. But before I do all of that, I get a breaker bar. I wedge it between the rotor and the caliper and I just pry on it a little bit just to get the pistons to push in. Move that, push the pistons in. Now I'm ready to take it off. And how I did it was the breaker bar, I wedged it between the rotor And I push on it and if you look you can see where the caliper is moving so it pushes the the pad pushes the piston inward and that gave me enough room so when I take it off, I don't have to use a tool to compress it to put it back on. Now this thing is heavy, so I got my wire. Take the last bolt, which is the upper. Pull on it, comes out nice and easy. Get my wire through. Now 
Now once I have it hooked in the caliper, I'm just gonna go ahead and mount it on the spring and wrap that around. Okay, so I chose to put it in this lower arm instead, wrapped it around and I'll just leave it like that until I'm ready to put it back on. Just wanna make sure that I have play in the line. The line is loose and it's not, there's no tension on it. Okay, so now I gotta remove this cotter pin for the lower ball joint. I'm just gonna straighten it out. I believe this is a 28 mil. Yep, 28 mil. Just try to crack it. Now it's not gonna be easy, but we spray it down with some penetrating fluid. Okay, so I spray that down, left it for about two minutes or so. I just keep going back and forth with it. Okay, got it loose. Go back and forth to break up the rust, whatever debris that's in the threads. to the top. Leave that like so. So now I got the wheel turn the opposite way. So the front bolts are exposed. So to get the upper ball joint I got a 15 mil. I'm just gonna try to get that loose. Okay. That came loose pretty easy. Just wanna make sure I could get it all the way out. Let's put it in just to hold it. Now I got the outer tie rod. Gotta get this pin. Another easy way to get these pins is just to cut them off. got my light okay so this pin actually broke it was very uh, rusty so it broke so my next 
solution to that is to cut it as close as I can to the bolt and then just back it out so once I got it cut flush just a little piece sticking out but that shouldn't be a problem I get my 22 mil I just I may have to use a breaker bar for this but yep got it on a breaker bar once I break that loose then I could take it off and I'm changing the tie rods, inner and outer. I'll do that in a separate video though. But um, if you're doing something like this and you encounter a rusted or a broken cotter pin, you see, came off, no damage. If you come across a broken cotter pin, just cut it as close to the threads as you can. With side cutters so you're just gonna get it as close as you can snip that end off the other side if you can't pull it out snip that end off and just back it out now there are a few ways to separate the outer tie rod from this knuckle once that bolt is out now this got to pop up they actually if you go to AutoZone or Auto Parts Store they rent tools for that that you could it's kind of a similar to that where it hooks and as it hooks in you line the bottom piece up with the the um, threaded bolt that's coming out and you tighten and as you tighten it pushes the bolt upwards that's not the right tool for it that I have so I can't use it I'm gonna try to use this ball joint separator uh, I'll see if this works how this works is wedge it between the boot and the knuckle and on this end I'm gonna hit on it with a hammer to drive it in and this is a kind of tapered um, fork so as it goes in it it separates it let's hope this works and it did great only thing about using this tool is you run the risk of damaging the, the boot on the tie rod so if you're gonna reuse the tie rod I wouldn't suggest you use that unless you have no other choice but um I'm gonna replace these anyway so it doesn't matter if if it's damaged or not so here's where the real fun starts you gotta get a heavy hammer and we wanna hit on the knuckle right by the ball joint we don't want to hit the the nut we just want to hit this area now sometimes you get it with a few strikes sometimes you pound on it forever but um let's see if I could get it So now I'm going to go on the opposite side. Okay. 
this is gonna take a while okay so after about 10 minutes of a five pound hammer massaging persuasion um, it finally came loose so now I just gotta finish taking this off This thing is very heavy, so I gotta take care not to the last few threads left. There we go. Okay, so once I got it out, I got it on the ground. I'm just gonna take the rotor off. I could have actually done it when it was on the vehicle, but um. I just chose to do it on the ground. Now to do that, I just use a rubber mallet, tap it, take this cap off, you can see the bearings packed with grease. Now there's a cotter pin. I'm gonna reuse this, so just put it in a cap. Guess someone freshly um, greased it. It's making a noise, a bearing noise, but um, I guess they just figure, you know, pack some grease in it, prolong its life. Okay, so I got my cutter pin. Pop that out. Put that with it. Take this little cap off for the bearing. You could take pictures of all of that before you do it. Now uh, this nut that holds the bearing in is it's not tight, so uh, channel lock. This should be good enough. Scrip it. Back it out. Pop the bearing out. I'm actually going to put the bearing on something separate. So I'll put it just on a piece of plastic. Got everything. Leave that off to the side. I lay that flat. Just put it straight out. And this thing is heavy. Super heavy. I'm trying to save as much of this grease as I can. So now, look at that, one hand versus two hands and thighs to take it off. And this is sharp. The lower one, 
shot. My six month old grandson could move the lower one. It's so easy to move. Okay, so now I'm gonna take this and there's a few ways to get the both ball joints out. I'll explain one of them, but I have a tool you could uh, that tool you could actually rent from the auto parts store. It's a ball joint press, I believe it's called. You get a ball joint press and actually I'm going to use the press to take both of them out. But there's another method. If you don't have a press, you could take them out is and put them back in with without the press. Just takes a lot of effort. Okay, so on the lower ball joint, it normally sits like so on the vehicle. So we got the upper, the upper has no threads. So we got the upper and we got the lower. The lower, it has a clip. This is not really a heavy duty tool, but it's what I have, so it's gonna have to work. And there are two, these two holes. You're gonna fit these two prongs in them. Once we got them in, squeeze and it's going to open up the clip to see the clip moving. This is not getting it wide enough, but I should be able to get it off. Here we go, squeeze. And it looks like that. Once you squeeze, it opens it up. This too. That's not good. Now one method of taking the ball joints out and put them back in is if you have a big socket, in my case a 36 mil with a extension. I try to use a straight extension and not the wobble. So there's minimum play. And if you put it If you actually put, and I have it on a rag just so I don't scratch up the uh, threads, but if you do it like so, and the reason why I'm using a 36 is you want it to sit on the outer edge of the ball joint. So if you look, my 36 sits perfect. So if you were to do that and hold it, and then use your hammer, same heavy hammer, and hit it. said it's gonna take a while but that's the idea to line it up and you want to hit it spray it down with some penetrating fluid keep doing that and it'll eventually push the ball joint it'll eventually push it upwards and it pops right out
then you get another socket that matches this one the upper and you put it on it and you do the same and you bang it out but the reason why you got to take the lower one out first because you need access to the hole to get to the upper one and installing it is just the reverse you're gonna put in the lower one first you gotta line it up make sure it's straight put your socket over it you may need a longer bigger socket and then put the extension through the hole and the idea is it's gonna sit like so and when you hit the extension it knocks the new ball joint in but in my case I got one of the loaner tools so I'm gonna use the ball joint uh, puller to take both of them out so let me set that up and then I'll get some footage of that okay so it seemed like this is the setup that's gonna work I have the cup the um, cap on it and the hole is big enough for the ball joint stem to come through you want to get a cup that's bigger than the that's wider than the diameter of the ball joint so once it goes in once it sits over it the ball joint will have enough room to come out slide that over it this is the clamp it's actually the press I believe it's called I'm gonna line that up over the hole and I went ahead and took the grease fitting off I'm just gonna butt uh, this against the bottom of it and let me set that up and then catch the rest now I just want to line it up as best I lined it up as best as I could now a regular ratchet like a half inch is fine to turn this but like I said a lot of work so I'm just going to use an impact wrench it moved it pushed it out it's not all the way out but I'm just gonna take it off and check I gotta realign it Okay, so it's it's not fully out but it's almost out from here I'll actually do the other method I use this method we have place a socket over it I hit it
Let me go without the extension. Actually, I used the 35. Okay, so 35 mil. Yeah, that's what it was, 35 millimeter. There you go. Pop right out. So I got a 27. Put the extension on it and this is the reason why I took the lower one out first so I could go straight through and put it on the upper stand it up Use an old ball joint as a just to keep it steady. From here, just bang away. And it's no clip in the upper one. moving So that's another way. It's not out, but um, it's moving. I could feel the groove right here where it, it pushed in. So that's just the other way of taking it out. Now I'm gonna hook the tool up and use the tool to pull it out. You just wanna get uh, one of the cups that sit or sleeve whatever they call it that sits over the ball joint it's not touching it it's a little wider once we got that we're gonna put the top on so the it could get pushed through the here we go so it could get pushed through the hole once that's set and a vise would make this go much easier but I don't have a large vise so gotta work with this and you go through the hole of the lower ball joint Line it up, hand tied it, make sure it's lined up. So the idea is, as this tightened, this threaded um, rod is going to push upwards, push the ball joint out into the cap. right out and this 
is pretty much you got pushed from the bottom so it was seen like that and it got pushed all the way out and that's how it came out okay so now that everything is apart I'm just gonna clean this up just clean it out with a brush and then I'm gonna put some anti-seize just a little bit not much spread that around some now I get my new ball joint And insulation is the reverse, the upper goes in first. So I have the new one here, it has a boot on it. Take the boot off, put that aside, try to keep it clean so nothing gets in it. And the new one gets put in. Like so. And then what's gonna happen now is you gotta find one that matches this in this ring. So if you look, see a little lip. So this one should match. It goes sits on the lip and that's what's gonna pull it in so I got that seated actually I don't have to use that Let's see, it's another setup that I could go with. Okay, just gonna pull it through. You know what? Yeah, I'll go with this one. Yeah, I'll go with this setup. So here you see these ridges. This smaller cup sits right in there. Could turn, but no play, no wobble. Put it on this side, moves this side. Nice and sturdy, put that on top. It's sitting on the lip. Turn that sideways. This cup has a, a little dip in it, I guess, or, a, or has a cup in it. So put that on. And we're going to bring the clamp and hold the whole thing together. <laughs> through the hole now there's a book that normally comes with these kits it tells you what vehicle 
what number, what setup to use. But a lot of the loaner tools, that book is not going to be, well, that information is not going to be available. So you just got to kind of figure it out. Once that's seated, make sure it's straight. As I tighten, you should see the ball joint being pulled in. Just like so. It's in, it's flush. I'll just wipe the excess. Never sees off. And here you see it. Now the same procedure for the bottom one. Okay, so I gotta remove the boot for the upper one. I'm using a flathead screwdriver. I'm unable to pry it off by hand, so get under there with the screwdriver. And just twist, and it pops right out. Take that boot off, put that aside. That's what it looks like. And it's no orientation on these, it's just, just goes in. But what I try to do is put the hole for the cotter pin um, going the direction I have it now, which is pretty much side to side when the hub is on the vehicle. Now once I got it in like so, I just got to find the one that matches this. And this one might be a little bit easier because, um, because of the clearance and you have to put the upper one in first. Put the lower one in first, you gotta bang the upper one in. So once you use a tool to put the upper one in, then the lower one, this opening is good enough to slide the tool over it. So we'll get the tool in, get it over it. And now the idea is to get the one that fits. Okay, that's lined up. Now I use a tool to pull it in. Okay, so now that it's flush at the bottom, it has to come down more. Look at the top, 
still see a groove right here at the bottom. It's a groove right here. That has it has to go all the way in. So what I do now, once I get it to where it's secure, it's not gonna fall out. Then I get another cap that sits over the ball joint. Okay. sits over it. I could put this on top. Got that lined up. And now I just finished pulling her in. Okay, it's nice and flush. No space, no gap. It's fully in. Now I put the new clip on that comes with the with this new ball joint. Put the grease fittings in, the bottom one, the top one. There's one that is a uh, it's like a 90 degree grease fitting that one goes up top so that way when you're greasing it you just snap the grease gun directly onto it and not have to come from the bottom so it's a 90 degree comes down and out you just go straight into it the bottom one is generally just straight you go right in so I put those two in the clip on so I got the fittings on, now to put the clip on, got the new clip sitting in the tool, squeeze to open it, so we put it on first, squeeze it, open it, slide it, once I get it in the groove I generally just make sure I could rotate it a little bit. Okay, that's good. So everything's ready to be mounted. Comes with a new bolt for the upper. I got the boot back on, upper, lower. This is the nut that's gonna go on the lower. I got the clip on, grease fittings. So now it's just to go mount it back on the vehicle. Okay, so I just put a little never seize in the upper bushing and this is set. It's not an adjustment for it. It has a, a little um, notch that it sits right in. So now comes the other fun part. I have my castle nut ready. So I'm just gonna put it right here. Now I gotta go get the bottom one in, line up the top, once I get it, catch it, catch the nut. Okay, so 
so now I just gotta tighten it to bring it up and then this is my new bolt that's gonna go in here and that's what holds the top once you tighten it it, sque it squeezes this together and it holds this from moving okay so here I got the upper bolt in lower bolt and the pin the cotter pin and just want to make sure this moves freely now I find that if you tighten the upper one first this would not move so I put the bolt in the upper one got it in a little bit tight not too tight then I'll tighten the um, bottom one to spec after I do that make sure this is moving freely then I'll tighten the upper one to spec so now it's just to put the rotor back on the bearings and button her back up now I'm ready to put the rotor back on put a little bit of grease back on the bearing that came off that on put the bearing back in This is not so could only go on one way. Put the knot back. And this is not torque tight, so it's just to snug it up. I'll just reuse the pin So now I gotta put the caliper and the bracket back on. Take the wire off, make sure the pads are where they're supposed to be. back in get 
it both upper and lower. Okay, got that tight. Back to the upper one. Yeah, we just want to tighten these to spec. spec so here we have it all done upper lower ball joint everything is back on turning nice and smooth and uh, job complete I'm not putting the tie rods on just yet I'm going to change them so I'm just going to do a separate video on that but please don't forget to like share uh, and subscribe